So I just, I just want to follow through you, Chair. I just want to follow up on a question, just regards the non-disclosure agreements. Um, does the non-disclosure agreements mean a victim cannot speak about their harassment? Senator, it, it would depend on what deed of release, what the circumstances were, um, uh, depending if it was settled. I, 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 it, it's. Um, it did, would depend on the circumstances, Senator, but it wouldn't be about um, uh, um, sh uh, what I'm getting is, is if the person still wanted to speak up about it, um, they can. None of our deed of releases or stop any whistleblower or those type of um, uh, reporting. Is, so, is there any deed of releases for people that are victims that cannot talk um, after they've signed that um, non-disclosure agreement, they cannot speak about their harassment? Um, potentially, depending on what the nature of a settlement settlement was. Senator. So potentially, or is there, agree is there arrangement, is there non-disclosure agreements that says that victims cannot talk about the harassment that they suffered? I, I just have to take it on notice to, to ensure that um, what I'm saying to you is correct, Senator. Because I, 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 I may be speculating in the sense that I am aware of a deed of release that was signed um, that on the basis of the settlement um, that um, uh, although the individual can talk about their circumstances, it can't be done um, in certain ways, just like there is an obligation on us way, not to talk about it ways, as well. Are there certain ways you can't talk about it publicly? Uh, usually with these things is publicly and the onus is also on us as an organisation not to talk about it as well. So I'm talking about the victims um, non disclosure arrangements and um, agreement. So well, thanks. I, I didn't take it on because we're going to provide you've it. You've the question that there is some that does, does require the victim not to be able to speak about it publicly. And you've added that that also may include that the um, that the organisation can't speak about it. It would always either. include that we wouldn't be able to speak about it as well. It wouldn't be one-sided. Well, I, in fairness, I, you know, there's real serious questions about people not being able to... You know, blowing the whistle is one thing, blowing the whistle, talking to management. Blowing the whistle is also clearing the air. So you know, there are serious questions about people not being able to speak out um, with non-disclosure agreements um, when there's cases of sexual harassment um, and or bullying. You know, there is... There are some serious questions raised about the cleansing of um, having the spotlight on circumstances that occur within a organisation. But so I'll leave that. I'll leave that for your 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 um, consideration. But I certainly have um, uh, certainly. Thanks for answering the question. Last Can one. I just go to, sorry, yeah, I just want to clarify. So we wouldn't put a thing to stop talking about the issue. It would be around. Um, uh, in going forward because it is either been resolved, it's been proven that it has happened, and it's about um, uh, the agreement or the settlement it's about, rather than the actual So the settlement, agreement. well, I'm using your words now, the settlement means that the person cannot speak publicly about it, even though they're a victim of harassment or bullying? Uh, it depends on what the nature of the settlement is, Senator. So the nature of the settlement can, it, um, can include um, them not speaking out publicly but it's by their agreement. Well, they don't have to agree to it, <laughs> Senator. So this is the thing. It's, it's well, I mean, when you when you're you're being sexually harassed, when you've been made the horrific allegations, and the and the inqui two inquiries, both the North inquiry, the newspaper reports, the Broderick inquiry, <laughs> the horrific harassment, sexual harassment, and bullying that's been going on in the, in the operation, and someone says, "Keep your mouth shut and here's some money," yeah. then they keep their mouth shut and take the money because they probably want to get out. They've had enough. I can say that's one circumstance that seems pretty logical to me. I'm sure there's many other types of um, approaches to when people sign those deeds of arrangement. If someone's saying you can only get the, a settlement if you turn around and agree not to speak out publicly, and that's the final arbitrary issue, then you have to be a brave soul in many circumstances, not just sexual harassment and victimisation, to, keep, to sign an agreement to say you won't speak out. Senator Sheldon, it's my understanding when you do a deed of arrangement, a deed of agreement, that you have to have a legal advice. You have to take it off to a third party, 
Um, I, I'm just not. I just want to clarify, understand what it is that we're talking about. So these are about. usually done between the. I call it the legal teams. Yeah. As a result of um, some sort of uh, arrangement that's been made, and used usually is that there has been agreement to settle beforehand, and this is just the things that are done afterwards. Yeah. So it's not like it's. Yeah. It's, it's done through the legal teams. I'm not trying to take away in any way from the circumstances, but I'm just trying to clarify what it is that we're talking about. And, um, uh, yeah... It, we'll be, we're continue, providing the, so our sure. deed of uh, release to you so that you can... Chair, that, that, that was very, a very fair question to ask, if, um, and, I, and, and I certainly have no problems with it. The point I was making in putting to... Putting to um, Chief Executive is that officer was that signing deeds of arrangement when you've been sexually harassed, and so I won't get you know at, uh, and speak about the sorts of issues that I raised before that people have been put through, uh, and you're told you get the money if you sign the document. You can go to a lawyer and they'll say you can get the money if you sign the document. That doesn't shine light on sexual harassment and bullying within the organisation. It it shuts it down. That's what my concern is. And that's why I raised it. I just want to clear one thing, Chair, just before we go. So sorry, Mr. Hubbard. The last one. So you'd said earlier on that the the North report had said my words, you correct me if I'm wrong, please. Something about because the bullying and sexual harassment was so toxic or whatever, that it could have led or endangered the lives of the travelling public. That's what the, it alleged, the North Report alleged, which right. we have subsequently shown that is not the case. OK. And did the Broderick Report touch on that? Uh, the Broderick Report touched on um, uh, the, the um, fact that they found is the real positive safety culture in the organisation and how all, whether it's controllers, firefighters, put safety first okay. and the safety of the travelling public. It was a positive that came out of the report. Yeah, okay, Mr Hartfield, but the negatives are far outweigh you know, the no, positives. No, 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 I'm not trying to say, I'm just saying from a safety perspective well, that was We, what we would hope. That's great. Chair, that'll do for now, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more conversation with a couple of hours with Mr Hartfield and his team when we're back at a later date. Later date, sure. Yeah.